What's up you guys? Coach Little Joe here back again for another video. Obviously not in my car today. I'm actually in my basement, uh, but technically office slash, you know, cardio core, gym, whatever you want to call it. Um, okay, so I got some interesting questions that came in on my last video when I was kind of explaining, um, you know, my first cycle that I took when I was 20 years old. I'm now uh, 31 years old, so I have been doing, you know, been in, using performance enhancing drugs on and off for the last 11 years. And uh, a lot of people wanted to hear my input on, you know, what's the best type of cycles when it comes to trying to grow, you know, how should you go about these cycles in regards to like the length of time and when to, how to cycle off, how to, you know, slowly add to that cycle if you're going to do a longer cycle and so on and so forth. Um, so I'm just going to get into that for you guys today and give you guys my my input from my experience and based on what I think is the best thing to do in these scenarios. Now, I had someone ask me specifically if there's some type of PEDs that are more beneficial for building your legs. And I found that question interesting because I'm like, hmm, well, they're not really specifically going to build your legs, but you know, there are ones that are going to help you develop more in regards to building more muscle, more strength, things like that. Uh, versus others which are you know not as inclined you know for what they would consider like bulking type drugs even though like no drug is specifically just for bulking or cutting um, pretty much every like anabolic steroid can benefit you know building muscle getting stronger etc getting you know reducing body fat levels to some degree so when it comes to you know building specific body parts that's obviously going to be involved with more training specific uh, techniques, so that's when you're gonna have to obviously analyze your form, your technique, your execution, your overall effort that you're putting into workouts, logging those workouts, and making sure that you're progressing each week. And then to go along with that, the nutritional requirements in order to uh, improve those body parts. So if you do carb cycling, for example, doing a high carb day on those weaker body part days is gonna be beneficial for you. And then you could potentially, obviously, when you factor in your cycle to that, um, I would say like in, at the basics, you know, you're going to obviously want to have your testosterone involved in there and then if it is more of an off-season cycle, you could have something like NPP or Primabolin or even like DECA, that's a little bit like not as common these days, but it's still, you know, something you could use in an off-season setting, but not all three of them, just like one combined with the testosterone would be ample enough for like an off-season setting. And then, you know, if you're going to be including other things like growth hormone and insulin, obviously those are going to play a role as well on the, you know, building those areas up, especially with the high carb days using the insulin can help you just like utilize those carbs better, shuttle them in better. Um, and you'll notice like more enhanced pumps and, and better strength and everything during those workouts as well. So not diving deep into that, but just wanted to touch on that just for that uh, person if they you know, if they see this video, then they can kind of understand that it's it's a combination of things. It's never just uh, about the drugs, okay? So when it comes to off-season cycles, should you do, you know, a 25-week cycle or 26, or, you know, like 24 weeks, 25 weeks, whatever, do like a full six months of your off-season, kind of taper things up, or should you do a blast and then just cruise for a bit? Say, for example, do like a, you know, 12 to 16-week cycle and then kind of go on a, a cruise for another eight weeks or however long uh, you feel is applicable to yourself based on, you know, blood work and things like that. Um, so in my opinion, there isn't a wrong answer here. So why I'm going to say that is because it just really depends on the individual because, you know, I would say if someone is, you know, before they go into an off-season cycle, they check their blood work and all their health markers are in check, everything's in good play, in good spot. So then let's say they're just starting from, let's say for example, they're starting from a TRT dose. So let's say they're taking anywhere from, you know, 100, and, let's just say they're taking 150 milligrams of testosterone a week, um, just to put it kind of right in the middle of the TRT dose. Um, I would say, you know, they could obviously increase from there and let's say go up to like, you know, for, say they go up to 450 milligrams of testosterone a week and then they want to add something in there, I would recommend, uh, like my favorite thing to add in would be Primabolin. So if they could add in the Primabolin, even at a dose of like 300 milligrams a week with the 450 milligrams of testosterone, that would be a great starting point there for their off-season cycle. And then what I would recommend them to do is, you know, run that for, 
you know, if you are going to plan, if your plan is to do a longer cycle, my recommendation is, you know, start with that, um, with that base, you know, with the, the test and the primo at those doses, and then you can taper things up, but I would wait and see, you know, do that for about, you know, anywhere from like six, six weeks, eight weeks, and then go get your blood work done, see where the health markers are at. If things aren't crazy elevated, like obviously there will be some elevations after eight weeks. Um, once things are like fully active in your system and things like that, that's when you'll start to see um, things with your blood work when things might be elevated. But if it's not out of the normal for yourself in that range, this is why you should regularly check your blood work every few months, just so you can understand what looks normal for you on a cycle and off a cycle. So after that eight week mark, if you check your blood work and things look, you know, things look okay, you know, your blood pressure is okay, all those markers seem to be okay based on your individual self and what's normal for you, then you could proceed to increase from there potentially. So for example, you could say, okay, I'm taking 450 milligrams of test and 300 milligrams of Primo uh, to start. And it's like, okay, well, I kind of want to push things a little farther to like, you know, try and get more out of this because I feel like I'm not getting as much as, you know, I want to out of this. And obviously this is speaking to people who have likely done cycles before this. Um, and you could easily increase from there and go up to like, say like 600 uh, test and 500 Primo. And if you're sitting there and thinking like, why test in Primo? Well, honestly, especially in an off season setting, I think it's like the best thing you can take um, in combination. As long as like, obviously Primo Volant is something that could be more expensive, but it's uh, something that's, aroma there's no aromatization happening with Primo Volant. So essentially you can not have to worry about taking any aromatized inhibitors and things like that, which is like something that can long-term, obviously if you're abusing those, using too much of those, it can lead to more long-term health problems, you know, especially with your blood work, you'd probably start to see things um, more out of range because of that, using things that are, you know, causing you to have to use estrogen, estrogen like inhibitors and aromatized inhibitors, things like that. So I always like to kind of lean towards that as long as the, even for myself, um, because I find, you know, you don't really need much of anything to take with that. You know, if you're taking just the testosterone and the primobolin, especially like a higher dose of primobolin. So I would suggest increasing to that, but then, you know, you can go another six to eight weeks and then kind of assess from there again with the blood work, et cetera. If things are good, if markers are good, then like you continue to add from there. You could have even add in another compound. Like I know a lot of people, uh, everybody's got a different opinion on, uh, equipoise, um, so you could use a common, sorry, a compound like equipoise, or you could use something, example, like NPP, um, which is a great thing to use in the off season, great for strength, great for your joints. Um, and again, it doesn't really have as much of an impact on things like blood pressure as like something like equipoise does. Equipoise is kind of like, uh, the way it impacts your your kidneys is kind of similar to like how anadrol would impact your kidneys even though it's not an oral so you kind of want to i would say like you know if you're going to use equipoise like obviously there's a beneficial to it but i would use i always would use a low dose of equipoise and um it's something that you'd want to use like a little more sparingly um you know but everybody responds differently in that case like i've seen people where it's like they can use equipoise and have no issues and other people might use it and then like you know it kind of makes everything get really elevated so it's something you want to avoid um but yeah the npp or echo poise would be probably the next best thing to combine with those and you could even start as low as like you know something like 175 milligrams a week of npp um to add into that and then like again scale it up if you need to up to like 300 a week um, which i wouldn't really recommend needing more than 300 a week i've seen people run as high as 450 but um I think going past a certain threshold is when you end up having to, you know, mitigate side effects and things like that, like with aromatized inhibitors, estrogen inhibitors, maybe progesterone, because NPP obviously can elevate like your progesterone levels as well. So again, like as you're doing this and going on a longer cycle, um, the biggest thing is just every like eight weeks or so, if you're going to do like a 24 week cycle is to kind of monitor that blood work. If you aren't doing that, then the bare minimum you can do if you're not going to check your blood work while you're on the cycle uh, more than, you know, every eight weeks is make sure you're taking the proper health supplements to go along with that to help, you know, protect your liver, protect your kidneys, protect your heart health and things like that. Um, because regardless, if you're only checking those markers when you're off cycle, 
then you're not really getting an accurate depiction of what those markers look like normal for you on cycle. So you want to be checking both on and off cycle because like for myself, it's like I can look back and see, okay, the last cycle I did, you know, this was normal for me versus this time, you know, things are, you know, maybe they're better, maybe they're worse. It's like you kind of, you want to be able to see that and assess from there be like, okay, like, do I need to take a longer break? Um, do I need to, you know, stop doing this altogether? Like what is, you know, what's going on here? It's just a way for you to have more data and analyze for your individual self what works best for you. I would say someone who's, you know, um, obviously, you know, been doing this longer, they're probably not going to want to do longer like cycles as often. They're probably going to want to do more shorter cycles, um, especially if they're a bit older and then give themselves more of a break where they're doing like TRT in between for X amount of weeks. I would say, for example, if you're doing a 16 week cycle, you'd bare minimum want to take eight weeks uh, for a break for TRT before doing another cycle because that's usually the minimum amount of time it's going to take to kind of reset your receptors and reset um, all your markers back to a normal range for yourself. Um, and the same goes for a longer cycle. You know, if you're doing like a 24 week cycle, you know, a six month off season cycle, like you probably need to take a longer break after that. So you kind of think about it in this sense, like you might be able to maintain better uh, between cycles if you do a shorter cycle because you'll get a decent amount out of that cycle, then you go into a break. And then as long as you're keeping, you know, consistent with the nutrition and the training and the, like the natural supplements, then like you should be able to maintain a lot better. Um, versus if you do a longer cycle, then you probably will need to take a longer break. So you might notice more of a diminishing return from the longer cycle um, if like you have to take that longer break after, right? So those are kind of things you want to factor in. But like the main thing like is just, you know, monitoring your blood work while you're doing it, making sure you're taking the proper health supplements. And regardless of the, the whether you're doing a longer cycle or shorter cycle, I think like either can be beneficial for anybody, but you just have to make sure that you're doing the right precautions regardless. And it's kind of like trial and error. I've done longer cycles and been able to put on good amount of tissue. And then I've done shorter cycles and been able to make great improvements. Usually the shorter cycles end up being like a contest prep because, you know, you're just going into a contest prep for, you know, roughly 12 to 16 weeks versus in an off season setting, you might do something a little longer. Personally, where I'm at at this point, like, I don't really need to do longer, like, off-season and uh, prep-type, you know, scenarios with that when it comes to a cycle. So I would prefer to do more for myself, like, you know, like a shorter cycle of, like, about 16 weeks and then be able to go right into a break after that and continue with, uh, you know, the TRT, okay? So hopefully that guys uh, gives you guys a bit of an idea of where to go about with it comes to, you know, the cycles and how long to do them and you know, what kind of works best for you. But at the end of the day, it's going to come down to like keeping on top of your health and uh, making sure you're staying as healthy as possible during the process. You know, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not telling you guys you should do this or not do this. This is simply just my own experience and me giving you uh, my two cents on it. Okay. If you guys like this video and you want to hear me talk about more things in this, you know, this realm of like PEDs and such, then Make sure you give it a thumbs up and leave a comment of what you'd like to see me talk about next. And of course, if you guys haven't had the chance to subscribe yet, make sure you hit that red button and subscribe now.